This is the examination of the hidden human condition. You're listening to the Hidden Killers Podcast. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi. Kaylee Turin, defense attorney, is joining us for some discussion. What I want to go into is, is this normal? Because there's different aspects of others' careers that from the outside looking in, we may say that seems rather odd. And then the individual who's in that role will say, actually, no, it's not. It's very common for people of this profession to do this sort of thing. And then sometimes you get the, no, it's not common for someone of this profession to do this sort of thing. What I want to specifically go into this conversation with Kaylee and ask you, because you are a defense attorney, how common is it for attorneys to show up to crime scenes that they are not involved in, that they are not representing any client of? Start taking pictures, start walking around. Of course, I'm talking about the allegations of Randy Murdaugh and Alec Murdaugh at the scene of Stephen Smith's body very shortly the morning uh, after it was discovered he was in the road and dead. The allegations are they were there. But again, not retained by anyone. How normal is that? Is this just a common thing? Were they out getting pictures and maybe wanting to offer their services or something? Is it normal? There is no reason unless they are involved. You know, as a defense attorney, if I see bodies in the street, I'm calling. I'm not taking pictures. Yeah. You know, I'm rendering aid if need be. You know, the only reason to take pictures is if you're involved somehow and you need it for later. And that's that's a, a puzzling piece of this puzzle in the, mm-hmm. the Stephen Smith case. And, and I'm not implicating or suggesting anyone uh, as being mm-hmm. the murderer or anything of that nature. But these are suspicious things that need to be discussed and pointed out. Oh, yeah. Because it, it, it is very bizarre. And I, I was racking that through my brain going, maybe there's a reason. It's a smaller community. Are they assuming mm-hmm. that down the road they're going to be involved in this because they're kind of the go-to attorneys? I mean, is that a lo- possible logical explanation or is this all overall just very bizarre? It's very bizarre because even if you think you're the go-to attorney, I mean, you haven't been retained by anybody. You mm-hmm. haven't had contracts signed. You're not on any case. So, mm-hmm. you know, that kind of excuse kind of goes to their ego a little bit that they automatically assume if that's the reasoning they're going with. But there's no reason unless you're directly involved. There were uh, accusations. As the mother of Stephen Smith has said that Randy mm-hmm. Murdoch contacted her uh, right after the murder took place, offering uh, to help in any way that he could. His firm has since denied that that phone call ever took place. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. I don't think Sandy has a reason to be making this up. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, but it's one side against another. I'm sure phone records could probably actually prove this one way or another. Mm -hmm. Uh, But does this happen? Uh, Would that possibly be a a logical thing where you see this tragedy take place in your community uh, and then you reach out to the family saying, hey, I'd like to help you any way I can uh, in in a real, you know, let me help you sort of way, even though there was no Mm -hmm. real relationship between these two whatsoever in the past? Right. And I... From that, I'm in a kind of smaller community outside Nashville, Franklin, which is still big, but we all know each other, kind of the officers and everything. So, yeah, I can see that reaching out. Hey, if you guys need anything, you know, lawyers here, we donate to officers, you know, medical funds, things like that. We're involved in the charities with each other. So I can see that potentially. No no selfish motive. You know, it is a much smaller community than where I am. And so I I can see that. I don't see any um, wrongdoing in that. And even if they did contact, you know, there's no reason to deny and just be like, hey, you know, I just wanted to see if you needed anything. Mm -hmm. You know, there's nothing 
evil or anything about that. So even if the conversation did happen, I mean, it's not a bad conversation to have. You're just helping out members of your community. You know, we're all in this together sometimes. Sure. So it's not necessarily anything that would be a red flag in that uh, aspect. It, it, it is interesting no. to me that the law firm, though, would say and deny that that even took place. What what right. I, what's the, is there logic there? Is there anything that we can read from that? I wouldn't say logic. I mean, it did happen maybe eight years ago. If it was right around the time of the death, maybe they forgot about it, you know, didn't keep records. But, you know, outright denying it, it's like, Okay, even if it did happen, there's nothing wrong here. But are you saying you remember every conversation related to this, even if it happened eight years ago? That's where I'm like "Mm, a little yellow flag there. Like, are you sure here? Um, Because that that is a long time ago. I I don't remember all the phone calls I've made (laughs) even this year. Yeah, I mean, it's like a bizarre thing to deny. Mm -hmm. Uh, That that just kind of stood out to me as, as being rather strange. Uh, with mm-hmm. something like this, as uh, they're going in and they're starting to to dig literally his body up, Sled saying, mm-hmm. we don't need the body to rule this a homicide. We're going to do that already, but we're going to participate in that as well. Uh, what, uh, you know, if anything, would one be thinking or should one be thinking if they've been implicated in this in some way, shape or form? Because there's been a lot of rumors that have been out there against mm-hmm. certain people. Uh, all of them being denied and very likely maybe have absolutely nothing to do with this. You know, rumors Mm -hmm. fly very quickly in small towns, even when no one is is truly at fault. Uh, What what, what should someone be in that situation doing at this time? I mean, if this investigation is going on, uh, is there reason at this point to lawyer up if you have nothing to do with something like this? Uh, or is it just kind of let things take their turn unless you know damn well that you are involved in this? <laughs> um, I mean, it's never a bad thing to lawyer up. But if you're just, you know, a regular citizen that has nothing involved in it, there's no need to. Usually, you know, police like to say, yeah, you know, it is your right to have an attorney. But they kind of look at it as like, oh, you're already going to that point. We mm-hmm. can't even have a conversation here. So it kind of can put you in a gray area in investigation. So I think people can, you know, if they're not involved, rest easy. But if they are, you know, maybe someone involved, you know, it's always good to have on a back burner just to spitball ideas since you have that confidentiality. What are some things, I mean, this is an interesting case because it occurred eight years ago. Uh, Mm -hmm. So the, and it was never investigated as a homicide. So a lot of the things that you would have in terms Mm -hmm. of investigation in an archive somewhere don't exist. They never did mm-hmm. those things. How does, or how do they go into this and find more information? How do, what, what would you be looking for? What would you, uh, as an attorney be wanting to dig into, to find information on, uh, who did this, who, who committed this crime, uh, with what we have. I mean, it, it's essentially trying to unearth this, uh, with information that may not exist, may be gone, uh, or just trying to find what's going to be out there. Right. And I think it just goes back to re-interviewing everybody, especially with, um, you know, the Murdoch trial finishing. You know, people's perception of the Murdoch family may not be this, you know, reverent family, you know, oh, you know, they don't have any power anymore. I don't need to be scared of them anymore. And not saying that there was any threats or anything done by the Murdoch family to other people, but maybe their perception has changed and they feel more comfortable being honest. But then again, on the flip side, if that happens as a defense attorney, I'm going to be like, oh, so now your story has changed eight years later. Because now our community is in the spotlight. You just want your 15 minutes, so to speak. So it's a double-edged sword there on that. I think that's basically the only thing you really can do since, as you said, basically all the physical evidence is gone besides his body that they're exhuming. What kind of odds do you think they have, even if they do find some interesting pieces that may point in some directions, at getting down to the beyond a reasonable doubt finger at an individual who or individuals who may have been involved in this? So if this did not have the Murdoch name attached to it, I would say it would be extremely hard. 
But we saw how quickly that jury came back with a verdict. All the testimony, all the days in court came back in three hours. Mm -hmm. That is telling that the community has their perceptions of this family already. Um, And they already have, they may already have preconceived notions going into these trials, if there Mm -hmm. is going to be a trial. And I think it's going to be a very hard hurdle to overcome is just the perception of this family in the community. What uh, I wonder about is not even necessarily, you know, the, it was quick to go, well, maybe somebody his age was involved in this. And that led to the accusations and the rumors against Buster. Again, we're not saying that he's mm-hmm. in, in, in this and whatsoever. But right. what I'm wondering more so about is maybe it had really wasn't him at all that was involved in anything like this. Uh, those accusations mm-hmm. being completely moot. Could it have been someone who didn't want to have uh, rumors circulating of a certain type of relationship there uh, if it did exist or whether there were even rumors of it because it would bring shame to uh, a family name because they look down upon that sort of lifestyle. Uh, and, you know, someone who's good at covering up things, uh, just kind of continuing down his road of destruction. Uh, of course, talking about Alec Murdoch, maybe being more involved in... Uh, the actual event itself and not even so much the cover up or, or both. Yeah. I think anything is a possibility at this point. I mean, they're keeping this investigation very tight lipped um, obviously just because of the media circus surrounding the other trial. But also I think they want to protect, you know, the witnesses and kind of give them peace of mind that they're not going to be, you know, thrown to the wolves, so to speak in this kind of case. And so protect them and, make them feel comfortable if they need to get testify in a trial. So I think anything's possible here. This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast. The Hidden Killers Podcast. With Tony Bruschi. Haley Turn, defense attorney, thank you for your insight on, uh, is that normal? Because, yeah, I didn't think it was. I don't think a lot of people think it is. Be sure to press subscribe wherever you download podcasts so you don't miss any of our updates and discussions on the cases that we are following for you right here. And if you want to weigh in with your opinion, we'd love to hear it. We have a phone number for that. It's 888-554-5537. More easily remembered as 888-5-KILLER. My name is Tony Bruschi. Stay with us.